Hello everyone and welcome to a lovely video of uh, Humankind in which I am going to teach you about the war score mechanic and the war resolution screen and all of those war score points, what do they mean, how do you increase your war support, how do you get most out of that. Uh, this is a very unique um, war see? mechanic that only exists in this game and so it got everyone confused. So first of all, this is a situation in which I'm not at war with anyone. The diplomacy in, um, in uh, Humankind, it shows you a little bit of a red dot here when something uh, happens that requires your attention. So in this case, um, they have renowned reputation or something like that as a merchant. Uh, and so it goes straight to the trade screen. Here we have uh, something about uh, the attitude changing with the Franks here. I am the Carthaginians at this moment in this game. Uh, this is on humankind difficulty, but uh, it doesn't really matter. This uh, war screen is the same in every difficulty. And we can see that they are hesitant now. And so the war support, okay? So the war support, we start by default with 50, 50 points each one. If you are playing with an aggressive civilization, this can go up to 80, just because, uh, sorry, not an aggressive, a militaristic. Uh, so for example, the Aztecs or the Mycenaeans, the Huns, the Mongols, um, all of those will start with a war support of 80. So if you have 80, you can declare war. If you don't reach 80, you cannot declare war, you can only declare surprise war, which will give you the traitor badge, and uh, will make you start the war much lower, so it's not ideal. You want to ideally go to 100 or as close as possible to 100 before declaring war, and the way you increase your war support is by having demands. Right now no one has demands on the other guy, so that's fine, but apparently they refused a treaty that I offered to them at some point, so I can use that as a grievance and I can demand that they uh, accept this. Now they immediately demand this from me. You can see there that the AI reacted immediately. And so right now nothing is changing. We are at 50 and nothing is changing because I have one demand and they have one demand. But if I refuse this one, suddenly they get 15 points from withdrawing the demand. If, if I refuse it, they get 10. And they can use that as an excuse to declare war. But if they, don't, they are not ready for the war, they will have to withdraw the demand because I refused it. Uh, and so they get more war support from that. They get a total of 15. However, I will be getting, for as long as we have one demand and they have zero, I will be getting three war support points per turn. So if I wait another 10 turns like this, I get 30 more, I get to 80, and once I get to 80, I can declare a normal war instead of a surprise war. So that's how this works when you are preparing for the war, okay? Keep in mind that when there is a demand here, either your demand or uh, their demand, it doesn't really matter, this trade is not working anymore, okay? It's purchased right now, but if I skip the turn, it's going to say suspended. This will go red and it's going to say suspended because uh, you cannot buy, uh, you cannot get any more trade from them if uh, there are demands going on. Uh, if you are buying luxuries, this will probably get a, um, give you a hit in your stability because you depend on those luxuries you, to keep your empire stable. So always keep that in mind. If you have trade going on, keep in mind if whether you can afford to make demands or not. Okay, so this is the same game, but a lot later. I'm in the medieval era with the Aztecs. As I said before, these guys are militarists, so I, by default I have 80. That's why even with these guys who are friendly, I'm not at war with them or anything, but I'm still around 80 because uh, 80 is my default with a militaristic culture. They are not a militaristic culture, so their default is 50. Keep this in mind. If one of your neighbors is a militaristic culture, they will start at 80, so you are already in danger. Now, we are at war with the English. Uh, the war is already over. They, their war support reached zero, and when this happens, the war is over. When anyone reaches zero, the war is over. In the meantime, in the middle of the war, if uh, you can offer a white piece or something like that, but that is usually not worth it. You always want to win the war. 
uh, that's the best strategy. If they lose a battle, if they don't run away by, but they lose a battle, they will lose eight. This is not per turn, by the way. That is uh, just for the action, just the one time. The one time you run away, you lose five. The one time you lose a battle, you lose eight. But also you lose four per turn if an enemy is occupying your city. So in this case, I'm occupying two cities of them. So that's why they have a minus eight per turn. And I am losing one from declaring the war and another one because I'm a uh, uh, proximity state as attacker. Uh, so if you declare war to someone who's close, that's another minus one for you. But as you can see, I'm still at 100 because I won so many battles and um, that I could always recover those two points immediately. So that was not a problem. So what happens with the war resolution? So you get some points, okay? Uh, some points from war support that you have uh, when the war ends. That's why you try to end it with 100. And also, you can see there are 68 from the war support when the war started. That's why I told you you want your war support to be as high as possible before the war starts, because it's going to count here. And another 10, because I had one demand because before the war started. So that's another 10. And another 60 from two captured enemy cities. So that is 30 per city which I personally believe right now is a little bit low. I think it should be a little bit higher when you're occupying cities. But anyway, that's how it is right now. So that is my total war, war score. I got 238 and of course I got to zero war support. So I am the winner. I can use this score for stuff. What stuff? Well, I cannot force them to become a vassal. That's very expensive. Uh, I hope they adjust this at some point in the future because right now it's really very very expensive to get vassals and it's almost never worth it and what can i get from that well my one demand you can see here i had one demand before the war started my one demand was londonia they had settled londonia and so i can get it actually i will get it because you are forced to get your demand and you are forced to spend 10 war score points to get that okay but 10 is very little if i could spend 10 on all of this i could get all of their territories which of course is not going to be the case you can only get the territory for 10 points when it was a previous demand that's why you want to demand as many things as possible before the war because you will get them all for only 10 points each which is very good uh, a city that I'm, I'm occupying you can see here it's 80 points so pretty expensive and if i want empty territories those are cheaper okay um, so I can even get territories that don't belong to those cities and that's totally fine. I don't have Mohenjo-Daro, I'm not occupying that city, so I can never get the city of Mohenjo-Daro because I'm not occupying it, you can see it's impossible. But I can get the territories around Mohenjo-Daro if I want to, okay, these are totally valid. And you can see here how much I have left, I can still get something else, I have 51 left, another territory. And that's it. I only have three left. Whatever you have left at the end will become gold that they pay you. Unfortunately, you cannot make the war longer. If you want one specific city, make sure you occupy the city during the war. Otherwise, you can never take it. Okay, so I'm going to force the surrender here. And you can see there I gave Nossos back. That's fine because it belongs to their vassal. Maybe these guys liberate themselves now. That would be very good for me. But I got Londonia, I got Sus. And I got a bunch of territories here that used to belong to Mohenjo-Daro, but uh, not anymore. So I got the Spanish Minister of Stars and things. And now for the future, let's say I decide that I want to attack them again and get everything they have left because now they are very weak. Uh, I weakened them a lot. Okay, we start at zero again because the war just ended between the two of us. When the war ends, you go to zero immediately. So it's not so easy to get two wars one after the other. But we can start getting some points by uh, demanding them this. Uh, please ignore the name I gave to my religion in this game. <laughs> I was bored, so I gave it a silly name. Anyway, they are demanding stuff from me as well immediately. Um, so I will refuse this. And you can see here, and now I get plus three per turn and plus two from one support during uh, equilibrium during peace you are going to get plus two per turn until you reach 50 or 80 if you are a militaristic uh, culture like the aztecs you are going to keep going plus two plus two plus two until you reach 80 and in my case i'm also getting another plus three from the ongoing demand so um, that's going to be five points every turn so that's how the war support works that's how uh, you increase it 
that's how the word score works and um, if you have any more questions about this topic please say it in the comments and uh, if you want to know anything else about the crisis really about any aspect of humankind that you are not getting uh, really well because it can be a confusing game at times please say it in the comments and i will be doing more videos to explain more and more concepts of this game um, please remember to hit the like button subscribe to the channel and as usual thank you very much for watching